An ancient kingdom, Arochuku, a historic settlement in Abia State, southeast Nigeria. Via Bende, Arochuku is about 74 kilometers from Umwahia, the Abia State capital. Arochuku shares a boundary with communities in Akwaibom State, with estuaries of the Cross River traversing most parts. The enlarged Aro Kingdom comprises satellite communities and all Aro in diaspora, the Aro Uzo. Such communities still maintain regular contact with Aro Chuku, the Aro Uno. The word Aro on one hand is a short form for Aro Chuku town. Aro is also the name of a people with their own unique Igbo dialect. A people who trace their ancestry to Arochuku or acquired Aro citizenship through assimilation. Aro Kingdom is a kingdom without boundary. It is not a geographical boundary. You map out say this is the Arochuku Kingdom. No, Arochuku Kingdom is expansive. Arochuku happens to be the nearest Igbo Kingdom to the Atlantic Ocean. We. Uh, History says that we got involved a lot in the old, um, old trading in the olden days uh, with the first white folks that came to Africa. Okennachi, Ibomisi and Ezawu are the three major kindreds in Arochuku. The legendary Ezaro is the traditional head of the Aro kingdom. The trio of Ezaro, Eze Bomisi and Eze Ezawu form the Eze in Council. Okennachi Kindred normally produces candidates for kingship. It is a royal kindred in Arochuku. By virtue of providence and circumstance, a great-granddaughter of Mazin Nachi, the founder of the present Aro Kingdom, was made a ruler over the kingdom. Nene Mboko Udo Omini Oken Nachi ascended the throne as the fourth Ezaro and wore the coveted crown as queen for 26 years. The Omwaro is a national insignia of the Aro Kingdom. It occupies the position of a coat of arm for the people. Articulated in 1902, ever before its Nigerian equivalent, Omwaro was formally established in 1948, a concept put together by an Aro nationalist, Mazidi Kuche. Omwaro symbolizes a means of interpersonal communication. It also carries communication between one kingdom and another. Its major metaphor is the Omu, that tender leaflet of the palm tree. The Omuaro also has as its component instruments of war, strength and doggedness. We are not necessarily war-fighting community, no, or war-fighting kingdom, no. But we were armed. We have soldiers and uh, represented by our neighbors from Abam, from Ohofia, and by extension other and uh, these arms are stored and armored in our place called Arujuku. The eagle atop the Omwaro coat of arm is a major symbol of peace, wealth, prosperity and supremacy of the Aro kingdom, a royal community occupying exalted position in the global Igbo race. Arujuku is a kingdom. And our kingdom, in every kingdom, you know that kingdom is symbolizes by a stool and a crown. You could see here, and th this our coat of arm is surrounded by the kingdom, representing from both sides a message from one kingdom, from one king to another. We respect traditional institution, and that shows us having the crown by the side. Like the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics and the old Assyrian cuneiform, the Insibiri symbols and signs remain the earliest form of writing among the Arab people. 
This is a picture representing a word, syllable or sound. It was a form of communication made through signs, body gesture or drawing. It was a satiric and strictly reserved for only those who really understand the art and its meaning. The ancient art of Nsibiri is presently represented in a special textile design identifiable with the Arab people. It is still infused as an aspect of their art, their national identity. Arochuku was privileged to be among the black communities that had the imprint of the early British explorers and Presbyterian missionaries. In a serene environment overlooking the now Arochuku local government council secretariat, situates this colonial building. Here, a colonial district officer in yesteryear's era resided and administered his jurisdiction. The chalet floats on air except for piped pillars bearing its weight. The stairs give it the look of a story building. It has features that any home has with furniture pieces, convenience and other decors and props. The environment surrounding the building exudes age, passage of a long period of time. The carcass of this truck, whose brand, model and year of manufacture are only better imagined, and the growth track of this tree confirm that years have really gone by. These water reservoirs are simply ancient. They surpass what today serves as reservoirs in homes and offices for both domestic and commercial uses. They are still holding water. The Hufgoldi Theological Institution serves as a training ground for both lay and pastoral enthusiasts who chose the path of Christian evangelism and doctrinal ministration. Men and women of high caliber that we find many places in Nigeria serving the Lord and humanity. And of recent, this place has been raised to the status of a degree awarding program, both degree in divinity and religious arts. With the backing of the Presbyterian Church, this institution provides teaching and learning processes and materials in quite a serene environment that enhances this objective. The library stocks and maintains research materials to aid those who need them in their choosing career. After the British Arrow War of 1901, Arochuku witnessed the landmark arrival of a Scottish missionary lady, Mary Slesor. You can see part of the creek, part of the tributary of the Cross River, the Cross River, from where 
Mary Slesor came from Calabar to Aruchuku to fight for the stoppage of the killing of twins. Because of its proximity to the creeks of the Cross River, at Amansu village, Arochuku, Mary Slesor found a gateway through which she came into and settled with her team as missionaries. In about 1924, Mary Slesor and the Church of Scotland Mission put up this administrative center, taking care of the welfare and training of women and caring for the twins that were rescued from the obnoxious laws of the primitive natives. She established what we call a, a training institute for women, where women will be trained on domestic sciences, that time what we call it the uh, home, home studies, home care studies. She introduced it in Chuku and um, was offering free medical services in those days through his uh, the missions uh, in Arochuku. She spent in that time living here was like uh, living in a, a terrible place. Apart from the welfare center, Mary Slesor established two arms of school for the primary and secondary education of the local people. This singular gesture greatly impacted positively on Arab people ahead of their neighbors. Mary Slesor was one of those who contributed heavily to Arab culture and tradition. To Arab custom and tradition. Mary Slesor, when he came to Arab um, he tried his best to, to maintain the peace, to stop the killings of the twins, and uh, preach about the gospel, and bring Christianity. She was a great woman. She did a lot of good things here. Brought us education, brought us religion, Christianity and um, taught us how to be sane and taught us um, how to you know, live well in God's way and also live educated you know, to, to, to have uh, to learn how to do things you know, better. She, she kind of put up good life into our people here and we appreciate it. Her coming to this, count, uh, this part of the uh, uh, Igbo land helped Arachoko to realize that uh, what we were doing in the past, uh, reject, rejecting the twins, were not good. She also contributed a lot in educating our people, ensuring that women got trained, in, got listed in, in schools, and um, our men also got listed in schools. Mary Slesor's humanitarian role made her a hero among the Arab people. Her native land, Scotland, appreciated her efforts and contributions to the people of Arochuku and southern Nigeria. Slesor's portrait adorns the Scottish £10 currency note. Beyond this, a representation of the areas she covered in carrying out her good works, including Arochuku, remains visible at the back of the same currency note as one of its features. Ujari is one of the historic villages in Arochuku. Originating from the legendary Eje, Ujari and other communities like Ajali, Ufuma, Ndike Leongu and Ndiopaleke in neighboring Anambra state came into existence as human settlement. Had two sons. The first son is Okoreke Eni. The second son is Uti Eni. Eni Mborola settled in Ufuma in Anambra state. His first son Okoreke founded a settlement called Indi Opaleke in the Anambra state. Then his son Uti had a son called Oji Uti. It is Oji Uti that founded Ajale after the defeat of the Akbo people. Now, Ojuti had a very successful son called Okoroj. There are links 
connections and historic evidence of such primordial relationship. Ibo is a Waka Apo, 17th century. When the descendants of this village went to Anambra and fought with the Apo people over Ajale, this Ibo in our language means door. They captured it as a sign of victory and brought it to this place for keeps. You can see this happened in 17th century. This is the residence of Uku Roj, a descendant of Eje. This structure now houses monuments and artifacts of history. The chains Shackles and manacles of the infamous slave trade considered to be a major venture in primitive Africa are deposited in this house, now a museum. Uku Roji was said to have participated in that trade that demeaned humanity as a business in yesteryears. As a house of antiquities, the Nsibiri symbols and drawings are reproduced on the walls and components of the museum. The museum still retains the sitting positions in the days of yore when the people gather to discuss matters of communal importance. No changes or alterations have been allowed in what had been in those years of Mazi Oku Roji. <laughs> This bell summons the people, alerts them of a gathering. The museum gathers those articles of trade and souvenirs from the colonial masters. It houses such antiquities that survived the British Arrow Expedition. The annual Ikeji Aro Festival is a diversified cultural event that binds Aro people. It stretches beyond bringing together the 19 villages of Aro Tuku in a cultural fiesta. Communities and towns that have links with the Aro Kingdom find in Ikeji Aro the opportunity to mingle with their ancestral root. The yearly approved calendar for Ikejiaro spans 17 days. The 11th day is the Afosu. It is a day set aside for entertainment of guests, visitors and foreigners who are resident in Arochuku. The ceremonial venue is the palace of the Ezra. But I've also had always been a part of Abchuku Ikeji, but not for this visit. Yes. The Nkweba Ibomisi, the twelfth day of Ikeji Aro, is the day of retreat at the central square at Oguibomu. <laughs> The six villages of Ibomisi file out with cultural music and dances. It is usually competitive. A trophy stands as a unique reward for the most articulate group from a village or an organization. A unique aspect of Nkwebi Ibomisi remains the traditional wrestling bout among youths. <laughs> Muzzles are flexed, challenges thrown, opponents dead, weaklings flawed. The climax of the KJR Cultural Festival is the Eket. It is a day that brings together the 19 villages of Arochuku and even Aro in the diaspora in a cultural funfair. The venue is under the ancient Ojiogo tree in Obinkita village.
This Iroko tree of over 700 years remains one of the surviving landmarks with high historical antecedent in Arochuku. <laughs> These elders believe that Ikeja Ro culture is an inheritance from their forebears. Their firm promise and undertaking remains to perpetuate and hand it down to generations unborn. They take care of the traditional rituals. Ikeja remains quite a lot. We have 17 days in Ikeja. And within the 17 days in Ikeja, I will make it sure that Porel is buried. A care the day is an extraordinary day. The influx of dances and masquerade groups from the diaspora has contributed in adding color and meaning to the Ikeji festival among the arrows. This masquerade group comes from Okija, Ihela local government area, Anambra State. <laughs> The Ikeji Arrow Festival is the Arrow version of the New Yam Festival common to the Igbo race. The focus of the festival remains the tuba crop known as Yam. Among Indibo, Yam is celebrated as a life sustaining food. The Ikeji Cultural Festival remains the most important and widely celebrated culture of the Ara people. Ikeji Aro is an all-embracing festival more than those that involve only the traditionalists. Another purpose of the Ekebe Ikeji Aro, apart from bringing together all Ara from far and near, is to honor Usim Nambi, a hero and war leader who died in battle. Part of the rich cultural heritage of the era is highlighted through music, dance, costume and art. The major street traversing the arena becomes loaded with a beehive of activities. The event turns into a real cultural carnival. Spectators line up, groups and troops file in to perform and to entertain. The youths remain the active participants. Their belief is that while the elders are responsible for the rites and rituals of the festival, the vibrancy agility and active participation it deserves remain the function of the younger generation. They are therefore the lead actors in matters of cultural music and dance and the carnival of entertainment and display, thus giving life, meaning and essence to the event as a whole. Ikeji Aro Festival has been with the Aro Chuku people it will remain with them. Its unacceptability by the Christian faith simply calls for positive changes and reformation. This, if successfully achieved, removes its ritual fetish and animist tendencies, making it the real general tourism destination from the historical Aroki, Southeast Nigeria. <laughs> Okay.